Now, uh, a Canadian <laughs> jazz singer and also a jazz uh, professor in regards to uh, what she's done. Her name is Katie Georgie. George, just George. Just George. Okay, mm-hmm. well, there I go, and I destroyed your name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Cigar and Whiskey. And uh, I reached out to her after seeing her perform and explain um, what she does and how she was told by a professor that's very difficult for uh, women to be included into jazz programs. And she actually managed to prove them wrong, <laughs> quite, quite so. In fact, she is the winner for the J- grand prize winner of the John Lennon 2021 uh, song contest and uh, the winning song was secret safe yeah that's the one okay so uh, katie tell me how did you start from uh growing up and wanting to go into jazz yeah I didn't listen to jazz at all as a child, which is really interesting. I listened, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. So I was listening to what my dad showed me and he was showing me the Eagles and Leonard Cohen and Emmy Lou Harris and uh, uh, lots of stuff that it wasn't necessarily jazz. Um, but I, uh, I was very musical as a child. We had a piano in the home. So I started playing by ear as a kid, just like plunking out random notes. Um, I always loved music. And my mom put me in music lessons when I was around nine. Um, And I just started seeing pop songs, mostly Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga. I still love Lady Gaga. I love her even more now that she sings jazz, which is kind of fun. Um, And so I was doing that. And then I got into high school and I was in all of the choirs that my high school offered. So I was in the chamber choir concert choir and the uh, jazz choir and I started singing jazz in grade 11 but then got really into it when I met some players on the scene Um, most uh, specifically I started dating a jazz drummer and so um, I started listening to a lot more jazz after that and I actually ended up falling in love with the music so I did my bachelor of music at Humber College and I did specialized in jazz voice and now I'm just completing my master's degree um, at McGill where I uh, am doing my Masters of Jazz Performance. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Now, I understand also that you have an Instagram account where you're doing a lot of um, American songbook, uh, not conversion, but uh, songwriting. Thank you. Um, And apparently you're doing quite well with that. A lot of feedback and a lot of people are um engaging with you in so many ways but um right now you're the uh, are you actually teaching at the same time as you're doing your masters yes i am um oh. i'm not actually taking any classes this semester this is my final semester so it's just putting a bow on my thesis um essentially um but i am i'm teaching a uh, jazz advanced jazz ear training course which i'm absolutely loving because i'm such a huge fan of ear training I really believe that it's important for students to transcribe to be able to better learn the language of music. So, um, yeah, I've been really enjoying doing doing the transcription and the ear training class. (laughs) So basically, you've been engaging yourself fully in jazz. Now, um, from what I managed to read, because this is all this you basically I discovered you on TikTok. I decided, okay, I have to learn more because her voice is just spectacularly on un- for well, it's true. I've got so the uh, single that you decided to release from your new album, uh, which let me pitch the the actual album here. Because Spotify gives me that access. The oh, cool. uh, <laughs> I Feel Foolish, which is her latest release, is going to be releasing. And is it out now for? Mm-hmm. Um, it okay. came out on Friday. It came out Friday. So before that, you had No Bounds. Yes. And then you had a bunch of singles. <laughs> yes. Um, all the way to 2019, where you had two left feet. You also participated 
with two projects where you gave your vocal chops to uh, the, uh, the jazz ensembles that you were performing with. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I sang on my good friend Robert Lee's album, and that was like lyricless vocals, so that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. And I also sang for my friend uh, Dennis Kwok, his jazz orchestra, but again, no lyrics, just wow. just voice, which just was really voice. cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, now, when you grad, well, at the end of your Humber College education, uh, you also explained in TikTok that you you and other grads were given recording time in this multi-million dollar studio. Yeah. And, uh, but you didn't have control over when you could actually get the time, but you had two gateways into doing your recordings. Um, the first one was with a quartet from what I remember yeah. you explaining. Um, and the, the, these, the quartet members, were they from the, uh, previously made links or encounters um sort of i'm the uh the the assignment that i did at humber the studio time it was part of a school project so okay. this multi-million dollar studio was at uh, and it still is at humber college and since i my initial plan was to record my 10-piece group um for both of my sessions but the recording date that i was given was uh september 25th and that was like a week and a half away from when we were given our dates. And I could yeah. not rehearse and prep the 10 piece group in a week and a half. So I sort of scrambled and I asked my, my friends, Tom and Jacob, uh, Tom plays bass and Jacob plays drums. And if they would play on this recording session, they're like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, well, I need a, I need a chord player. And the school had just hired this incredible guitar player. Her name is Jocelyn Gould. She, uh, she won the Juno for jazz album of the year last year. And so I asked her, I nice. said, hey, I have this much money. Would you be interested in playing on my on my album? I just I have this in like a week and a half and it would just be really fun to play a couple of my originals and a few standards. And I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought, OK, well, this could be really fun. Like I'm having a good time, like recording the music. I'm, I'm, who knows if I'll put it out? And so that that's what became of that session. I just it was sort of for fun and I. I wanted to use the studio time, but I knew that I didn't have enough time to prep the, the 10 piece group. Uh, just by curiosity, how much time did you need to actually prep the 10 piece group? I rehearsed the group every once a week for a month prior to the recording session. Okay. Well, so but... we did, we did four, four rehearsals. Okay. And then previous, well, previous gigs, because uh, you've been, uh, pretty much across Canada, <laughs> based on the on the jazz uh, the jazz participation on your website, uh, from Calgary all the way to Montreal, I think. Mm -hmm. The farthest uh, east I've gone is Montreal. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll have you here in the Maritimes. Like I mentioned during our conversations, the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival decided to revamp. Uh, their name to just harvest because they've been doing more than just jazz and blues and they've Amazing. been bringing pop they've been doing electronica they've been bringing uh, various groups now to try and encompass everything similar to what they do in the, the jazz festival in montreal yeah absolutely now um album wise uh, i'm assuming that you probably uh, had to I don't want to say perform because that's not actually audition for Humber to actually get in their program yes I auditioned when I was in high school so I, I sent in a video when I was in Calgary I, I recorded my video when some of my friends were back from college um and so they played played on my audition tape and they were already at Humber so the faculty already knew <laughs> the people in the video which was good for me um so I, I sent in my tape when I was 17 and then then I got in, and so I, I moved across the country. Oh, it's, 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 a, it's a gigantic move. Now, uh, where were you originally born and living prior Calgary. to you? Cal Calgary. So you yeah. were right next to the actual uh, college, if you will. Oh, um, uh, Humber's in Toronto. Oh, well, there we go. Well, it's a, right next 
Base wise. But um, your website and the TikTok mentioned Montreal and Toronto. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time in Toronto. I'm currently living in Montreal while I finish my master's degree at McGill. Um, but I do, I do go back to Toronto quite often and I lived there for years. So I'm very familiar with the city and I, I do, I do consider it a home. <laughs> now, uh, apart from singing, uh, you must be using, uh, well, apart from piano, you must be using other instruments or have other uh, instrumentalists participate in giving you some feedback on what to do in regards to um, certain arrangements for uh, some of your songs? No? No. Um, I've taken arranging courses. Like while I was at Humber, I did that. But a lot of what I've done, I just do based on my ear. I use Sibelius notation software. So I just input it there. And if I like it, I like it. Um, I always go based on what I'm hearing. Um, and it's always nice. Like I'll play it with the group. And if I'm afforded more than one rehearsal, then I'll make changes for the second one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I usually just wing it and I go off of what I think sounds good and what I've been inspired by. I do a lot of listening. So, you know, a lot of the Basie Sinatra stuff, I'm a huge fan of any Ella Basie, anything arranged by Quincy Jones is going to be gold. So I take a lot of inspiration from stuff I listen to. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, now, I do remember a sp particular part that kind of grabbed my attention more than anything. Um, you uh, have big dreams and big wants to actually perform in the U.S. Yeah. But you encountered cer certain hur hurdles. Could you elaborate a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, I am solely a Canadian citizen, so I. it's really difficult. You can tour in Europe, pretty much no problem, but the U.S., um, it's really difficult if you're not a U.S. citizen to tour in the U.S. You have to get a visa, so you can get the O-1 artist visa, or you can get the P-2 visa, and both cost a lot of money, um, and both can be really tricky to get. If you want the P-2 visa, you need to join your local musicians union and go through there, and it can, it's, it can take a long time. It's a very difficult process, and the visa is only as good as, it's only good for as long as your tour is, so if you've got your first day on April 1st and your last day on April 29th, if you were offered a gig for like a million dollars on April 30th, you couldn't legally take it. If it was, if it was in the States, um, you could just get banned and, you know, for like for years. So it's really challenging. Um, I mean, touring is expensive already, but just getting the visa and making sure you're able to cross the border and not get banned is always, it's a really tricky situation. So I've been, I've gotten so many offers from places in the States or people saying, are you going to come to her down here? And I'm like, you know, I'd really like to, but I, I, I would really need to make it worth my while and have like a, a really big tour where I can be there and, you know, add dates in between if I can. But it's one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm going to need to get a grant to afford to be able to do that. If I want to bring my band, I'm going to need more money for that. So mm -hmm. it's it's a tricky situation, but um, I'm hopeful that you know if I if I can get a, a good manager or something to help me with all that kind of stuff, it, it might help. I think you need like you know immigration lawyers and stuff to help with this sort of thing too, because it it does get it, it get it gets tricky when you're trying to get a visa. Uh, now, COVID wise, <laughs> everybody knows about COVID nowadays, but with the federal government lifting a lot of their mandates and provinces changing their mandates mm -hmm. to something a little bit more loose. Um, I, I understand that going to the U.S. and coming back, they're still encouraging Canadians to actually do the PCR tests. Yeah. But uh, that said, how was your coping mechanism during COVID? Because as a singer and a performer, you can't really go in the club if it's shut down or if it's restricted and you have to wear a mask and everything else. Um, do you have anything in particular that you manage to actually keep as your number one thing to always cling to if you were feeling anxious or uh, smothered? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, it's kind of funny. My, my coping mechanism in a way was releasing music. So I was releasing a bunch of singles all throughout COVID. I, I started in 
April with one of my my first single from my album No Bounds and then I released the full album of that in January and then in March of the same year I started the singles for um, my EP Now Pronouncing so you know it's just like every single like every four or five weeks you know there's been a new release so I I was always you know looking forward to that like preparing for that promoting those things so the releasing music part was just really helpful for me um you know it always gave me something to look forward to something to work towards something to work towards promoting um and also just you know learning new songs listening to new records that i haven't had the time to listen to i i got to read a lot i it's so it seems funny but you know finding the time to just read a book it it doesn't happen very often no. um and i read the handmaid's tale and then i read the the sequel to that one and i really enjoyed it and uh you know, I, I started, I bought, now, now things are busy. And so I, I bought a bunch of biographies of jazz musicians that I've been trying to get into, but just haven't had the time. So hopefully I'll be able to get to those soon. But, you know, reading was really fun for me. And just releasing music, though, I think is the main thing. It was, it was always really nice to look forward to releasing something and have it out in the world. Yeah, well, the, the, if it wasn't for the fact that you did what you did, I wouldn't have known of your existence as a jazz musician. Uh, singer um that that said a lot of questions that i ask to previous uh, artists uh have already been answered but i always ask the same thing at the end what <laughs> it's gonna sound funny but it, what is your favorite dish oh tacos <laughs> tacos, tacos fish tacos or Oh, tacos al pastor. So it has like pork and pineapple. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I, I will, I, I, I will die on this hill. I, I, tacos are probably my favorite food. They're so delicious. I'm actually going for tacos after this. <laughs> now, uh, it, I'm assuming that you probably like hard and soft tacos. Soft shell. Oh, soft shell. Yeah. yeah. And a little bit of lime. <laughs> yes, the lime is important, and so is the uh, cilantro. Um, or coriander, some people call the it. coriander, actually. Um, the um, questions are pretty much all done. I mean, awesome. I can't, I, can't, I can't ask for more. But if uh, if we're looking for uh, you, I know that you've got an official website, which is uh, katiegeorge.com. There we go. So, folks, if you want to have a newsletter or if you need to contact her, this is the best way of actually doing it. But please uh, take the time to go on Spotify and also on TikTok to see Katie George in action. Mm -hmm. You'll be delighted. <laughs> so that thank you so much for taking the time, Katie, because I do know that you're busy, with, especially with the Masters, but this was really, really a nice time. No, thank you so much for having me. It's really nice to talk to you. Have a nice one. You too.